How's that sound? That good. Did you did you have any problems with this one? Or are you still working on it? Go through it. The, the only thing I would say is I prefer to write it this way, but you can do what you like. You need the chain rule there because you have root of T. I'm sure you can do this, right? If you want the derivative of that, because that's what its velocity is, velocity of that is the derivative of that. The derivative of that is 1 over 1 plus that function squared times the derivative of square root of t, which is 1 over 2 square root of t. That's what the velocity is. It's that, okay, and then it's that evaluated at t equals 16. Put that in there, right? Square root of t squared is just t. I'm sure you can finish that one off. Well, you need this in here, though. You need the two in there. I mean, if you simplify this, if you simplify this, you get one over two root t, one plus t, and evaluate it at 16, and it's all good. Guys, can you listen, please? You know what? Listen. The reason I put this one in here is because it's a function evaluated at a point. You want the derivative of a function at this point, and then you want the derivative of this function at this point. You can do it the long way, and you know the derivative of this. To get the slope, the derivative of this is secant squared of x evaluated at that point. Right? Evaluated at what value would I need if I want the slope? Slope is that's why I got to I got to evaluate that at negative pi over four, right? Secant squared negative pi over four. You could use exact values if you remember them, or whatever. Um, that gives you the slope, and then I'm assuming that once you find the slope, you can easily come up with the equation. Well, because it's related to this one. Why did I put it in the inverse section? Good question, because this is not an inverse, right? You want the derivative of this? This is 1 over, what did you say it was? This is the nicest one, right? 1 plus x squared. And you need to evaluate that at, at what point do you evaluate that here? Negative 1, right? You can go through and come up with this. Or you can use the thing we did at, you know, at the beginning of this, which said, how are those going to be related? What should you come up with for the two numbers there? They should be reciprocals, right? Whatever you get here at the end should be the reciprocal of whatever you get here. Okay, those should be reciprocals. Those should be reciprocals. You can put this in point slope form if you want. If you don't like the pi over 4 in there. Write it once you know the slope of the thing. Write it and just shift the line up to that up to that place. Okay? There's two I mean there's two reasons for this question. One is so that you can be reminded of that. Those are reciprocals. That fact you can uh, look back at. If you want the equation of the line, you have the slope. Now it's kind of just grade 10 stuff, right? I would start by thinking, if you have a slope of a line through the origin with a slope of 2, it looks like that. But we don't want it through the origin. We want it through this point right here. If I want it through that point, well, I suppose that point is over here and down here somewhere. It's actually, uh, I don't know, wherever, something like that. But if you want to shift it, you think, just think about shifting it from the center down to that point. I would have to shift it. Where would I have to shift it here? I have to shift it to the left. Um, I have to shift it to the left 
pi over 4 and down 1, right? Left pi over 4 and down 1. If I want to shift that, because those of you that are doing math 12, you're doing transformations right now. If I want to shift it down 1, I go y plus 1. And if I want to shift it to the left pi over 4, I do x plus pi over 4. This is an equation for the line. If you want to multiply it out, you can. If you want to write it in a simpler form. If you want to make it y equals 2x plus pi over 2 minus 1, you can. Or you can write it as y plus 1 equals 2x plus pi over 2. Or you can just leave it like this. In some ways, this is the most convenient form for that line. Right? Because it's, it's point-slope form. It shows the transformation of each direction plus the slope. You can do a similar thing for this that I won't uh, do right now. Are we okay with this? Um, we'll leave this one for now. I think we're probably okay with this. Inverse trig functions don't come up that much. You have to remember three things. It isn't that you have to remember six things. You have to remember three and then just know that these three are the negatives of the other ones that they go with. Look for the differences between them and it'll help. At some point, we'll, uh, we'll do this likely. No, you don't want to?